And there's no doubt about where the Ardesh stands on interruptions to the leader's speech. Confidence. Confidence in, confidence in the integrity of our institutions is vital to the future prosperity, security and cohesion of this society. Unfortunately, there's still some attempted protests in the audience. Been damaged, I see someone being put and out And it there. must be restored. We, with others, have a great obligation to do that. Undesirable practices, undisclosed conflicts of interest, abuses and illegal acts, including misappropriation, corruption or tax evasion, where there is real evidence that they have taken place, must be eternally investigated and pursued. We must make sure to the limits of our power that they do not happen again. The public are entitled to know how they are governed, and we are the first governments to function under the full freedom of information legislation. We need, through public education, to encourage a civic spirit amongst our whole population. And Fianna Fáil is the largest political party and must lead by example because we all benefit from publicly provided services and we're therefore morally bound to contribute to their support in accordance with our means and with the law that protects all of us. So as a party we are the first to have developed our own code of ethics and as a government we are establishing an ethics commission by law to watch over our democratic institutions. We've sustained extraordinary economic growth at 7.5% for the sixth year running, with no real sign of a slowdown. In 10 years we've reduced the debt from 93% to 46% of national income, and from one of the highest in Europe to one in the lowest. Our exports of goods and services But are still attempts Our exports by very, of goods very and services have grown fourfold from £16 billion 10 years ago to an estimated £64 billion this year. We are on course for building 50,000 houses this year, where the previous peak back in 1981 was 29,000 houses. And over the past decade, we have by far the best record of creating jobs of any country in the Western world. Ten years ago, <laughs> ten years ago, most people predicted we would never see full employment again. Yet now we are on the threshold of it, a historic tri triumph for our country. We have generated mo new jobs for a half a million more people. And since coming to office, we have more than halved unemployment from 10% to under 5%. And Fianna Fáil promised in the last election to target unemployment, and we have done it. Now we've moved on to help the people and communities still experiencing chronic long-term unemployment. We're determined to bring them into the widening circle of our prosperity. Fianna Fáil and government is undertaking a comprehensive drive to build up resources in our poorest communities to make sure that young people do not get drawn into drugs or crime, and that they have places to go that provide the opportunity to break the cycle of poverty. We will keep on upgrading the skills of our people so that we can fill the good jobs available for people at home and for any Irish person abroad who wishes to return. The number of jobs and choices now available is in historic terms the Irish economic miracle. It's a miracle we're determined to spread to every section of our society and every region. Like other countries, like other countries that have grown rapidly, we have to recruit a larger workforce than our resident population can provide. We welcome every contribution and our vision of Ireland is an open, tolerant and welcoming society. Not only pluralist, but multicultural. We are putting in place a humane and well-ordered system for looking after asylum seekers while their applications are being processed. 
racism has no place in our society. And there are still interventions by, it has to be said, single hecklers and people making protests. They're rapidly bundled out by the stewards. And we as I say, no doubt about the where they are, they're speed standards. Limits. We have to develop a dynamic economic model of our own based on social cohesion, membership of the euro, and enthusiastic participation in the global economy. But while allowing earnings to reflect more of the gains of productivity, we have to keep firm control so that we do not undermine their competitive position. There has been a rise in average living standards by over a third since Fianna Fáil reinvigorated the economy in the late 1980s through a combination of real wage increases and tax cuts. And the new programme for prosperity and fairness is a further milestone in the history of social partnership. It brings the voluntary and the community sector for the first time fully into the partnership process. And I wish from this Ardesh to compliment each one of the social partners for the part that they have played in constructing this programme. We are fulfilling our pledges on taxation, both to the electorate and the social partners, so that people can keep more of their earnings. Over the past 10 years, tax rates have been brought down by some 24 points. 23 of them were taken off when Fianna Fáil was in government. And we are now on track for a standard income tax rate of 20% and removing four out of five people from the higher rate. This will be a historic achievement. Indeed, when we took office, a single person on PAYE entered the tax debt at just £71 a week, and from April it will be almost £110 a week. When we took office, a person on average industrial earnings faced a marginal tax rate of 48%, and thanks to Charlie, by April we will have brought that down to 22%. This is a simple, undeniable fact. In the last election, we promised to cut taxes, and we have cut taxes. In fact, this government has done more than anyone to remove people on low incomes from the tax net. Well over 135,000 people in our three budgets, and that is over 100,000 people more than the previous government's three budgets. The introduction of the minimum wage was a pledge that I campaigned for during the last general election. It's now about to be introduced. It will be £5 an hour within two years. This will be the highest in Europe, and this year's social welfare increases will match the rise in earnings, not just cover inflation. Our older people are always at the forefront of our attention. Pensioners have been given special increases, brought forward by a month, that are on course now to bring them well over £100 a week during our term of office. And this represents a real increase of one third. Rapid infrastructural development is required if the country is not to become clogged up. On completion of the National Development Plan and an expenditure of £41 billion, journey times between our major cities by road and rail will be much reduced. All of this is part of a larger process to open up the whole country. The Lewis, the Port Tunnel, the Quality Bus Corridors and the final part of the Dublin Ring Road are all happening. We have opened the Lee Tunnel the Arklow Bypass, are upgrading the road and rail to Galway, Tralee and Sligo. The planning laws are being streamlined so as to avoid long delays on projects. All services are vital to the regions, and I'm glad to announce tonight that we are making flight connections between Dublin, Derry and Knock part of our essential public services programme. Our priority is to create more balanced regional development. We want growth to take up the slack in parts of the country that are not yet fully benefiting from buoyant economic conditions. 
we want to reduce the pressure on the greater Dublin area. We have ensured that the border, the Midland and Western region will still benefit from another six years from Objective 1 status. And the new decentralisation programme will add sizeable commercial towns that do not have a concentration of industry. Urban and rural renewal will improve our towns, both for the benefit of those who live in them and for the business and tourism. Our housing policy is to increase supply and reduce bottlenecks in the planning process so that prices are brought down within reach for young couples. And Fianna Fáil delegates in government will do all in its power to sustain into the next generation the full-time family farm. Supports negotiated by Irish ministers in Brussels are a substantial part of farm income and the government is having success with the industry in developing and reopening European and third markets. There is provision of £6.7 billion in the National Development Plan to give farmers the opportunity to make their farms efficient, productive and environmentally friendly. We will introduce better and continuous price transparency to eliminate any cartels. Today, there are more opportunities than ever before to bring additional income into the farm household, and a rural development policy is geared to encouraging the uptake of compatible on and off the farm activities. We have no less concern for our fishing families. We aim to protect their livelihood and access to Irish stock at European Union level and in upgrading our air sea rescue capacity. In the 1980s, Fianna Fáil made real the vision of the International Financial Services Centre. The centre now employs over 9,000 people, generates hundreds of millions in tax revenue. Fianna Fáil also transformed the Temple Bar District into one of the most attractive cultural quarters, making an important contribution to generating all the year-round tourism. And we have worked hard to reach the point where the Irish are leaders in key industries of the future. This time when we entered government, we undertook